Africa's largest carbon emitter, South Africa, is sending a high-level delegation led by President Cyril Ramaphosa himself to the climate conference COP27 already underway in Egypt. Africa's most advanced economy will present an investment plan for the Just Energy Transition Partnership through which billions of dollars from developed countries will help South Africa reduce the carbon intensity of the economy. Now, chatting to me on this country's specific climate change plan and funding is Chris Hart. He's the executive chairman at Impact Investment Africa, based in Johannesburg. Thanks for coming through tonight. Uh, uh, Chris, it's good to see you again on the show. My uh, pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for making the time. What's your take on South Africa's latest Africa's uh, energy transition plan being presented at the COP27 uh, summit in Egypt this week? Well, I think South Africa has been very uh, cooperative, I think, in, in the sense that we're playing a team game as far as the, you know, the, the challenges to the world climate um, concerns, all right? Um, and uh, I, I think certainly there's the will to have a transition of the economy from high uh, uh, um, coal intensity, et cetera, to, to alternative energy. But we, we've got a serious problem in the sense that uh, South Africa struggles with its energy security, uh, both on supply and price. Both are actually under largely, um, you could say, one of the underpins of the South African economy, certainly historically, has been cheap electricity, uh, you know, to fuel things like, um, uh, you know, um, transformation of minerals, uh, beneficiation particularly. Um, South Africa is actually relatively a strong beneficiator, but that does take a lot of energy. And South Africa needs to maintain that advantage. It doesn't make sense to actually, you know, just throw that out of the, the water. And this is where, um, you know, to make the transition, South Africa says we will help with the world's problems, but the world has to help South Africa with its problems. And uh, if we don't sort out things like unemployment, Africa will regress and maybe fragment. And then these agreements will mean nothing, um, you know, ultimately. Um, so what we, we need to do is be able to actually uh, get proper commitments, not people just speaking, um, you know, that there's lots of money available. These we, we need to actually have capital available that's actually in the, the transmission mechanisms of the financial market, you know, so that they are actually fully accessible uh, to make the transition. For instance, if one makes the investment uh, as an individual company or, or individuals, um, it's, it's an expensive process. We sit in a uh, high level of load shedding, for instance, uh, simply because uh, the cost of, of, of investing in alternative uh, to, you know, recognition through carbon credits um, and, and to be able to access carbon financing. The world needs to assist South Africa um, to actually access carbon financing and then, in other words, to, to register the, the, the proper carbon credits to have that filtered through into small, medium enterprises that are making a contribution to uh, improving climate change. These so, things have to happen. Yes, um, uh, Chris, just a quick one. South Africa currently going, I'm sure you know the latest about uh, ESCOM's uh, rolling uh, outages now, which has been announced, is going to go for a couple of hours and what have you. So the utility challenge is, 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 uh, is, is, is struggling uh, to provide South Africans with uh, enough electricity. And then you've got the whole process being started about uh, retiring some of the uh, coal-fired plants and, and whatever. Uh, the World Bank is putting some, some money on the table for South Africa. So uh, at this very critical time in which South Africa's level of energy poverty is beginning to increase, um, is, that the, is this the right time? Do you think the transition can take place at this time? Well, South Africa needs to get back to its required energy level, then it can begin to make the transition. Or the two can go side by side. But the two do need to go side by side. South Africa cannot decommission a, a coal plant if there isn't the uh, the matching 
uh, energy that goes with it. And one needs to also appreciate that renewables do not provide base load energy. This is this has been, you could say, that the dirty secret, if you like, behind uh, Germany's transition, etc. Ultimately, when the re renewables fail, they go back to coal. And South Africa needs to, to, to actually be able to rely on a proper, stable and um, uh, robust uh, base load uh, energy production. And at the periphery, look at the, the renewables and look at um, uh, you know, projects, etc. that can mitigate uh, the, the you know, the, the actual coal uh, pollution, including uh, carbon capture plants at the actual source. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, how the whole idea and the plan being talked about uh, comes down to the business and investment community, you, the executive chairman at Impact Investment uh, Africa, so how would his energy transition multi-trillion, um, multi-billion rand program, how will it work for the business and investment climate? What's the need for the private sector and what are you hearing on the ground from your colleagues and investors and others? and uh, folks who are moving capital together to say, look, we agree with this. How does it go? What is in it for us? What's the transition plan? What's the timeline? What are you hearing? Yes. Well, well, I think basically one needs tax incentives to be able to access uh, it, uh, alternatives, so where people can actually install like solar on the roof or wind farms, that there are tax incentives and, and tax mitigation that mitigation that the international community compensate the South African government so that the South African government can really give strong tax incentives to be able to do it because they're com compensated uh, externally um, by that. This is, uh, it, it's so important that the rest of the world needs to appreciate that we have very, very specific non-climate change uh, uh, challenges such as unemployment, we cannot push that higher. Uh, we, we, we actually need to be bringing down unemployment and the use of, of carbon at the same time, and that will require um, grants and, um, and uh, capital uh, from outside sources into South Africa. Um, and that's despite the fact that South Africa is struggling from a, uh, an investability uh, point of view from from uh, you know because of yes. status etc. We still need to uh, you know overcome that, and COP needs to actually give that very very serious commitment of real capital that is actually accessible, uh, maybe through tax incentives or something like that, uh, and also carbon financing options must be made available. Uh, for, uh, for South Africa to actually make what we call a just transition. It doesn't make sense to shut down the economy, uh, to, you know, to satisfy international uh, treaties um, while we struggle with the unemployment that we've got and low growth and the poverty and, and, and inequality that goes with it. Uh, what economic sectors in Africa, Chris, do you think will be at the front line of this very... Uh, important and dramatic change in the way we cultivate, harvest, harness and use energy on the African continent. For South Africa in particular, what sectors are you looking to be the most impacted? Well, the most impacted is in fact agriculture is one of the, the, the areas that can help uh, provide companies that are polluters that are looking for uh, offset projects. Uh, agriculture is in fact quite a strong sector to be able to do that. Uh, alternative energy also is strong offset uh, possibilities, especially where you've got companies that can use their, their, their taxes if allowed through tax incentives. Uh, houses and, and the community in which they operate on their houses and also access carbon finance, in other words, the carbon credits that can be generated from these projects as well to help finance these projects and also lower the, uh, the, 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 the footprint, in other words, to actually assist companies to get to net zero, right, without actually committing um, self-sacrifice to to actually do so. At the end of the day, when we're at net zero 
in 2050, we need to actually be able to say that our companies are in a more robust state, not in a weakened state as a con consequence of it. And we are employing more people also as a consequence uh, and not as, a, as something that costs the economy. And that will depend on international finance being made available, uh, not just to the South African government, but to the actual private sector uh, in a match this and um, and actually get the transition uh, properly uh, according to the, sh the schedule and meet the targets uh, that, that we're committing to. Uh, on a final note, uh, Chris, do, do you see this energy transition program plan by South Africa as an economic game changer? Will it be? It's, poten it's potentially a game changer and it depends on how, how we handle it. If we don't get the, um, the, the uh, capital to actually make the transition, it's going to actually damage the economy quite, quite enormously. We're going to be charging carbon taxes. It's going to diminish our ability to, uh, you know, in, in many key industries uh, that, that needs to be um, uh, sorted out. Um, and uh, in, in other key industries like our If it's just a carbon tax imposed on that, these industries will die off and we will we'll lose the multipliers that go into the economy. If it's the other way around, that we do get the capital to actually make mm -hmm. the transition uh, possible, we will actually emerge with, a, with our beneficiation industries intact and maybe further downstream multipliers being enhanced through these particular um, uh, through the capital program that, that we can actually do to build not only big businesses but small businesses in South Africa. Um, there's an enormous amount of economic growth that South Africa needs to okay. absorb its 35% unemployment rate. Okay, great. Thank you so much for those insights, uh, Sir Chris Hart, Executive Chairman at Impact Investment Africa in South Africa. Have a pleasant evening.